possible because the lion from the tribe of Judah became the Lamb of God on your behalf so that you can become a child of God. This is the good news. This is the one who's worthy of your worship. Would you guys all welcome and honor Apostle Tom as he comes to the stage? All right. Stay standing. Stay standing. Say, Lord, give me ears to hear, eyes that see, and a heart of understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, today I'm going to be talking about um, spiritual warfare. So uh, just a, a teaching um, to equip the body of Christ. If you need a Bible, just raise your hand. We'll have a Bible for you. Um, if you don't have a Bible, you want to keep that Bible or, or maybe someone in your family needs a Bible. That's our gift to you. All right. Now, Here's the thing about the, today's topic. Take notes. I encourage you to do that each week. Uh, you'll be talking about it in house churches as well. So if there's questions of what I say, if I say something that's like, wait, what? Um, go to your house church, or if you're not in a house church, in your program, there's a list of the house churches on the website. You find a list of the house churches. Okay, there's house churches from Tacoma to to. Paulsville and everywhere in between, okay, Shelton and in Gig Harbor and just all over. I don't even know where they all are. So <laughs> praise God. That means good things are happening. So, so multiple ones in Port Orchard. So I just encourage you to be in a house church. That's how we're gonna do koinonia, which is the word fellowship of the saints, okay? The Bible tells us to make sure we do that. So I uh, encourage you to get in one of those. But in the house churches, you can, it's more interactive, okay? So, so especially if you're new, you have no idea about church, you're kind of new to church, you might want to raise your hand and ask questions. Um, not really the time to do that um, this morning, okay? But in house churches, that's exactly what's kind of there. All right? All right. So we have pastors over those, and uh, they'll be able to help you with that. Here, here's the thing about today's topic, why this is important. Um, you know, life isn't all just mountaintops. Okay? <laughs> I know that was deep. Okay? I'll let you just give you a second to get, get a grasp of that. Okay? So the youth, the youth are like, what? So, so there, there's, 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 there's the, the valleys, which are great as well, right? There's pastures, green pastures, still waters. But there's a place in between those places called the valley of the shadow of death, okay? Anyone know what I'm talking about? Not because you read it in the Bible, but because you've been through it. And those places are, um, they're scary. They're uncertain, how many of you have literally experienced the tangible presence of evil? Okay. Where you're like, uh, yeah. You know, even the world, they, they, they know there's evil. Right? So they, 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 they like to play with it. Right? We go to a haunted house or this or that. We know there's something that just kind of like makes our skin crawl. There's something there. Right? So um, sometimes the church acts like there isn't. Because we say, well, our enemy's been defeated. And um, so we just ignore our enemy. But it's actually not the counsel the apostles give us in the scriptures. They're not, they don't say, hey, yeah, don't worry about your enemy. No, he's like, don't be ignorant of his schemes lest he get an advantage on us. Right? Second Corinthians chapter 2. So, so we, we, I'm going to say a lot of verses. Okay? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I have about, you know, 50 verses that are racing through, but I'm going to try to just make it very simple and very quick message. Um, sometimes in those valleys, um, the enemy actually does get advantage on us. And I, I, by my end of my message, I want to make sure you know how to, to take back what he took or what to make him lose his hand from what he's touching that he's not supposed to be able to touch. Amen. Okay. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not the guy that wants to make the devil big. Okay? No, my God is big. The scripture says he's El Shaddai. This is Hebrew for all-powerful. Meaning his throne's above it all. Okay? So I don't make the devil big. But I also recognize my adversary 
And if I'm not wise, I will downplay what he's able to do. He is able to do some things. But the scriptures talks about who he may do it to. Meaning you're able to give him place as a believer. Okay? So I want to make sure we understand, one, what are the things that give place? I might not get to all of that. We're going to do this. We'll have Craig and Colette. My goal, what I feel in my spirit, is that we will talk about this uh, maybe for a couple weeks. Okay? Until I feel the spirit of God lift off of it. Okay? But I want to equip you. The family is supposed to grow. Okay, you're not supposed to stay a baby. Okay, when you get born again, as George said, you, you, it's a reset. You are spiritually a baby. You don't know the deep things of God when you first meet God. None of you did. I didn't. We had to learn those things. And we were given um, spirit, the spirit of God to teach us and lead us into those things. But I, I find most believers are ignorant of the schemes of the devil and what it looks like when you're under attack. Okay? I don't want you to be ignorant of those things. There's more things happening that might be an attack than you might even recognize. And so you're giving place because when the enemy's, because he's invisible, that's a bummer. <laughs> it's like, I wish I could, you know, it's like, you know, Jared's my enemy. It's like, okay, well, I, I know when Jared's here. You know, I'm just making that up. He's not my enemy. <laughs> but, but if he was, I could see Jared. I'm like, oh, you. But my enemy is invisible. Okay? That's a bummer, okay? But the Spirit of God, one of His attributes is discernment. Okay? So we want you to grow in discernment. Now, uh, you can just turn to Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to go through a verse that, you know, if you've been in in Christ for a while, you're like, yeah, okay, great. But I want to hit on some things so that we... Or remember, we, you know, the Spirit of God already knows all things. He lives in you. I'm going to remind you of what you already know. Amen? And maybe put light on some things that have found a way to sneak into your life that you weren't, you thought was just natural. Okay? The enemy will do many things, is the first steps of his work, and you'll think it's just natural. Okay? So I don't want you to to not be aware of his schemes. Okay. Verse 10, he says this. This is the Apostle Paul to the church. Who's this to? The church. This is to believers. This isn't to the world. This is to you and to me who are in Christ. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren... He says this, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, Isaiah chapter 11 gives us what the the sevenfold spirit of God is like. One of them is the spirit of might. One of the attributes of the Holy Spirit in your life is a spirit of might. Who in the Old Testament had might? Samson, right? Now, Samson fell, didn't he? (laughs) He needed wisdom. But it was a slow progression of the enemy getting access into his life without him thinking about what the Bible says about his actions, his behavior. He's not supposed to be with with Gentile women, and he had a soft spot for Gentile women. So he's already outside of the word of God, and it finds himself being deceived, trapped, losing his might. So so, um, he says... Be strong in the Lord. There's things the scripture tells us that make us strong in the Lord. I'll get to that in a little bit. And in the power of his might. Put on. This means you have to do something. Say, I have to. Put on the whole armor of God. So that's something you have to do. That's an intentional action that you take. We want, oh, I'm a Christian and I got the armor. I, I hope so, but it's not a given. He says you have to put it on. There's a part that you have in this. I want to make sure that we know uh, what those things are. That you might, that you may be able to stand against. Meaning if you don't, if you're not strong in the Lord and in the power of his might with the armor of God on, if you're not, he's, he says with those things you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
the wiles of the devil. So with his strength, his power, his might, with the armor, you may be able, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of dark of this dark age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Meaning they are spiritual. You cannot see them physically. Sometimes they do manifest physically, um, but they're heavenly beings, okay? But the scripture says you've been born of the spirit. So we fight spirit with spirit, okay? So this is, this is the bummer in the Old Testament. They're just flesh, okay? So their adversary who was a spirit, they're, you're coming to the wrong battle. So what they would do is they would just rely on the Lord, but the Lord is exterior, right? So this is the beautiful thing. They still had the ability to rely on the Lord, but Eli- Elisha gets to say there's more on our side than there are on theirs, right? You remember this? Very powerful little revelation there. You have to remember there are more on your side than there are on the enemies. Amen. How many of you have been here in the midst of deliver? How many of you have been here and you saw deliverance in the house? Okay. How many of you, you were the one going through deliverance? Okay. Praise God. So, <laughs> and there was a moment where a demon came up and spoke. How many of you have seen that? Okay. So, you know, there, you're, you're going, okay, that is a woman speaking with a man's voice, right? The first month we launched, or maybe it wasn't the first month, the first couple months that we launched, uh, we, we had a Sozo night. And we said, we're just going to go for it. Kind of, kind of put a stake in the ground. Let everyone know uh, we're that church, okay? Yeah. So, so if you're here and you, just, you, you want kind of that lukewarm, just attend, might not be the church for you, okay? <laughs> There's plenty of churches that will do that for you. Um, but here we want to go after the, the more of God. If you go after the more of God, you expect that you will be resisted. Okay. The enemy really doesn't care if you're just trying to occupy space here on this earth. You're not really doing anything for the kingdom of God. You're just trying to fill space. He don't really care. There's a lot of churches. The enemy, you know, he has, he has an army. Okay, the scriptures give us that there's, there's like a, a rank, in a sense, to God's kingdom and to Satan's kingdom. The, the enemy is not dividing like, hey, I need a third of my forces to go to this church over here who's like not doing anything spiritual. No, he's like, one demon will take care of that one. Whole church occupied, one demon is just going around, just having havoc. Why? All the doors are open, so he's not even have to work very hard. Right? Pastors, elders are in sin, just wreak, reap havoc, just have good old time. So he doesn't have to put a bunch of forces on a church that's just basically occupying space, not going after the more of God. But if you go after the more of God, what happened with Elisha? He was countering the enemy and every, and the, the king is like, that's it. Send the whole army for one man. <laughs> and the whole army shows up and he, he's sipping his coffee. He's like, oh, look at that. And the servant's like, uh, this is not good. This is really bad. And he's like, what, that? He's like, Lord, open his eyes. All of a sudden, he sees heaven's armies, spiritual hosts of righteousness, fire. And he's like, oh, we're good. And what, is it, what does Elisha do? He comes out, and he's like, who are you looking for? And he's like, strikes him with blindness. The whole army's blind now. And he's like, yeah, you're in the wrong place. Follow me. <laughs> Brings them to the capital of Samaria, where now Israel's army is surrounding the army of Syria. And he's like, all right, give them eyes to see again. All of a sudden, they open their eyes. And the, the king is like, should we kill him? He's like, no, you know, kill him. Feed him. Send him home. It says from that day, they, never, they didn't mess with Israel anymore. <laughs> right? They were like, not messing with them anymore. What a whole army, one man just says blind. But he knew who he was. And he knew the Lord was with him. Okay? And he had eyes spiritually to see. That's what the school of ministry is about. It's about giving you eyes to see spiritually. 
okay? Under accountability, because people could say, I have eyes to see, and then what they do is not, does, does, it's not the spirit, not the right spirit. Okay, so, um, but look what he says. He says, is our, 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 your, your boss, your spouse, your children, your parents, your whoever are not your enemies. Okay? No, it's, it's not flesh and blood. Principalities, powers, thrones, rulers of, 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 of this dark age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. He says there, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Let me just tell you this. There is days that are not as good as other days. In the scripture calls them the evil day. How many of you have had one or two evil days? Okay, all right. Where it just seems like, this is not the mountaintop anymore, okay? We're not in Kansas anymore. Where's the, you know, what is it? Toto. I've never seen the movie, but I haven't. My mom's like, that movie's stupid. So, um, <laughs> my mom didn't let us watch none. It's so funny. We were in the world, but I never watched a lot of these things. My mom was like, we're not watching that. It's dumb. We watched the Westerns. John Wayne, I can tell you every one of them. Okay. So, so, <laughs> so anyways, in Tacoma. Yeah. So no wonder why we moved to Oh La La. So anyways, a little peek into my childhood. Um, okay, back off the rabbit trail. There's an evil day. And every day is not, you know, sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. But there are these moments that are glorious. And it seems like everything's right. And then out of nowhere, it feels like evil day. Accusation, finances disappear, these, uh, you know, lawsuits, all kinds of stuff can come against you. You sickness, infirmity, diagnosis, all kinds of, your marriage feels like yesterday was great and today it's like, are we going to make it? Okay. So he says, those things that produce those evil days are from the powers of wickedness in heavenly places, not from the person. The conduit might be a person, but the thing coming through the conduit's not a person. Okay? So I want you to understand this. And I'm going to give you a couple things. We're going to go through this. I'm going to give you some symptoms you're under a spiritual attack. Okay? And you might want to take that list so that you can kind of like have your mind renewed so that you're not ignorant of the devices of the devil, because that's what the scripture says, right? Second Corinthians chapter two, don't be ignorant of the devices of the devil, lest he get an advantage on us. That's what Paul says to the church in Corinth. So this is what he tells us. Stand. This is, this is now, again, what did he say at the beginning? He says, Verse uh, 11, uh, that you may be able to stand. He goes again and he says, verse 14, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put it on the, uh, the, the breastplate of righteousness, having uh, shod your feet with the, the, the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith um, uh, uh, with which you will be able to quench the, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So he has darts. <laughs> That's kind of a funny word, right? He's throwing darts at you. I grew up and we played that game. <laughs> verse 17. <laughs> the conduit was my brother's. Okay, so <laughs> verse 17. How many got brothers that <laughs> played, played stuff like that on you? You were the younger one. And take the helmet of salvation... And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is a part that we leave out sometime. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. What does 1 Corinthians 14 say praying in the spirit is? Praying in tongues. So, so, so again, sometimes we just say it's just prayer. Well, for sure that's helpful. But he also gives us what type of praying. He says praying in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So you're not only praying for you, you're praying for others. Amen? Pray for that person that's the conduit. Because that's not your enemy. 
Don't be deceived. Don't, don't Karen. You know, it's, it's kind of like a racial term now for for white people. You're a Karen. So so you know, I don't know why that name came to my mind, but you know, Karen's not your enemy. What is there a male version of Karen for Kevin? Oh no, that's messed up. So. <laughs> That's funny, Kevin, Karen. So what's up? So, but anyways, that, that's not your enemy, okay? Um, the, 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 it's not a human. The conduit can be, but it's not really the source. The source is a spiritual power, okay? So we're going to talk about these things here in a minute. I want to go through my symptoms I wrote down. Um, and then we'll go back to it and, uh, we'll look at it. Okay. Number one, this is a symptom you're under spiritual attack. Okay. Um, physical tiredness or sickness. So I'm going to put a bunch of stuff. It, it, it's just, I just put physical, but I'm going to give you a couple things that it might look like. Tiredness is a big one where you just, you just wake up, you slept enough, but you're just like, <sighs> okay, now it might be you're eating bad, all that stuff, okay? But, but how many of you know what I'm talking about? You just wake up, you feel like you got hit by a train. And you're like, what in the world? Don't be ignorant of what you have going on that week or in that season. How many of you have found it? This is what me and Katie found. This was like so funny. Whenever we had to travel, whether it was a car ride with the family, we're going down to Vancouver to see, see family, or we're going out, we're going to have a fun day, whatever it is, or we're traveling, it, it'll just wake up. You didn't get any sleep. So all of a sudden you're tired, whatever it is. But it seems to be in a moment where I'm supposed to have a great day with my family. I wake up and I'm just like, we gotta, I should have packed the car last night. I don't feel good. You know, what is this? For a while we were ignorant of the schemes of the devil. Can I just be honest? For a while we were ignorant. And then it was like, it's kind of, there's a pattern here. And it seems like every time. And so we said, that's it. And we would just, we would pray before we, we would just extra little prayer before going to bed. And then in the morning before starting, we would come together and it would be against that. Normally we do that every single day, but intentionally saying we break every power that would raise against us. Okay. So I'll talk to you, I'll tell you here in a couple minutes how to pray, but physical fatigue, sickness, Jesus healed those afflicted of the devil is what the scripture says. So, so sickness, especially how many of you, 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 you're, it seems like you've had seasons where it was like everyone in the family's sick, but you get over one and another one comes. Okay. That don't just be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Okay. That, and I'm going to talk about here in a second, why he's doing these things, because he actually has a plan and why he does them. But I just want to kind of open your eyes so that you're not ignorant. Your tenacity for godly things, this is number two, tenacity for godly things begin to, to waver. Your prayer life, you just like, ah, oh, oh, man, I don't have enough time today. Ah, oh, man, I just had to sleep in because I was so tired. <laughs> so I'm going to have to skip my spiritual habits today. Or you go to the Word of God and it's like, where do I even read? I've read all of this so many times. It's just, you just, nothing feels like there's life on it. Okay? Your time in prayer, you begin to, 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 to wane in doing it. The importance, the thing that once felt like the most important thing, eh, not that important. Time in the word, ah, it's just, it's lost. It's, you know, nothing's jumping out at you. Serving in the family of God, you just go, ah, I'm, okay. And I'll, sh I'll share a couple others and you'll see how they actually work together. Tiredness will work into this one. Because, you know, so he's not playing one side. He's, he's trying to, he's, he's, it's coordinated attacks. He'll try to get you in four, four places so that, you know, it's like, you know, if you lasso a, 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 a bull or something, if you just have one and you're trying to whatever, right? 
Uh, you, I would rather my buddies get a foot, get, we get a, we all, well, I got a neck, you got a leg, we're going to get this thing, you know, we're going to get this thing down. Okay? The enemy wants to get you, what's that, Gulliver Travels or whatever, Gull, you know, he wants to get you down, okay? <laughs> and we're going to use a bunch of different, these little minions to get you down. Get you tiredness, get you sickness, get you frustration with your coworker, get you, I'm going to get you at every angle. Here's why. Let me just give you the why already. What he wants to do is, one, he wants to hinder and stop the will of God in your life. But the way he does it is cause you to be either too tired or too frustrated to hear God's voice. The enemy's trying to get you to not hear God's voice. Okay? Because the vibrancy of your spiritual walk and for your, your passion for spiritual things comes from God. So if he can get you away from those things... Oh, now you're in trouble. Because he's the good shepherd. What does he want? What does a wolf want to do? Remove you from the shepherd, okay? So first got to remove you from spiritual things. Uh, they just, they're not going to just stop reading their Bible. Well, if I make them tired and sick. So you got to see these, okay? So his goal is to, to remove your, your, your passion for God, your, your, your time in the word, these things. Uh, number, number three, one of the things he'll do is offense. Okay, so so if you're serving or if you're in house church or if you're in the fellowship, this fellowship or or any kind of whatever workplace, he wants to call offense. Now, the scripture says in Revelation that he's the accuser of the brethren. Okay, and it says he he brought his accusations day and night. So 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 some 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 of this offense actually comes because people are actually accusing you, right? Your spouse sometimes can be, can be, can fall into one of this. You can fall into it, right? You begin to accuse other people. Um, so when you begin to feel a heart of offense towards someone, the enemy wants to break the connection of fellowship and draw you away. If he could do that in the family of God, well, then you're wandering, right? You're away from the fellowship. What does Hebrews 10, uh, 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 the scripture says in Hebrews, he says, do not neglect the fellowship of the saints as some are in a custom of doing, especially as the, the, the hour of the, of the Lord's return draws near. As the Lord, as we were more close, that was 2,000 years ago. <laughs> and as we, we, he says that the days will get darker and more evil. He says, do not neglect the fellowship. So, well, you're not going to just neglect the fellowship. The reason you're going to neglect the fellowship is because he, he causes offense. Okay. The reason that you'll be done with your, 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 your marriage or your parents or whatever, offense. Especially if those people are spiritual people. Okay? Or maybe you're supposed to share the gospel with them. Now you're offended and you stop. You're, you're the conduit of which the good news, uh, uh, the gospel of peace coming is gone now. Because you chose to be offended and remove yourself. In fact, actually, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that talks about don't be ignorant of the schemes of the devil, that he may take an advantage. The verse before is talking of offense. He says, why don't you just forgive? That's what he says. And I talked about it two weeks ago, or yeah, two weeks ago. Where he says, why wouldn't you rather just be offended or, or, or uh, wronged? Why wouldn't you just, just forgive them and just prefer to be wronged than to go... At, to court against these people. He said, just be wronged. What's wrong with you? Just be wronged. <laughs> I love that. What's wrong with you? Just be wronged. Um, I put number five, uh, and I connected it already, or number four, I connected it already um, to the, the, the sickness, chronic sickness, patterns of chronic si- sickness. Number six, uh, sleepiness. You're just tired. You can't get enough sleep. Even you're so tired, all you want to do is sleep, but even when you try to go to sleep, you can't sleep. Okay? Spiritual attacks. You're just restless. Sleeplessness, yeah. And that will get you in trouble. It got, think about this. Elijah got in trouble, had a victorious day. The guy was just hungry and tired. Jezebel rises up and says, uh, if, you know, may I be like them, those that just died, if by tomorrow I don't take your life. He runs. He runs, he runs, he runs, and then he just passes out. You're just tired. Michael Elijah, you're so tired. You just need a nap. He wakes up, an angel made him food. He's just hungry. He feeds him, passes back out. 
Wakes up again. Angel wakes him up again. Hey, you gotta eat. Goes up, keeps going. I just needed a nap. I, I'm I'm joking, but I'm 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 actually serious. We, sometimes that spiritual attack is is to get you to a place. How do you know you're more vulnerable when you're tired? Okay, and hungry, right? We call it hangry. <clears throat> we could we can just say, oh, it's just it's just natural. No. It's now natural, but it started spiritual. The reason you couldn't sleep, the reason that you all you want to do is eat the sugar and Doritos and the pizza is because you're under a spiritual attack and you're telling yourself, I'll feel better if I eat this. And afterwards, you don't feel better. You do for about 10 minutes and then you're like, I don't feel better. Okay? So he's trying to wear you down. He's trying to wear you out. Okay? When you're on fire, it's not going to happen in a moment. He's going to try to wear you down. Okay, trying to get you in the flesh. Because in the spirit, he's got no shot if you walk in the spirit. He's trying to get you into the flesh. I shared this at church last week. Uh, I was speaking at a church in, in, in the ends of the earth, uh, in, uh, Arlington. And uh, <laughs> I can get to you know Italy the same time it takes me to drive to Arlington. So um, that's a joke, but not a joke. Um, so... <laughs> Anyways, it was an awesome uh, time there. People got saved, healed, delivered. Yeah, who was with me? That was awesome. People just throwing up and getting delivered. It's awesome. So, um, but w- w- I knew that's what I, my assignment was that morning. Was they asked me, "Hey, would you come and teach us? You know, cast out devils, do whatever." You know, I'm like, "Oh, okay." Brought 15 of Sozo's finest, and we said, <laughs> "We're gonna have some fun." So uh, we did. But that morning. Let me listen to this. That morning, if I'm not in the spirit, you know, I'd be in jail. That morning, I go to Safeway. It's early. It's way before church. I go to Safeway. Um, I was getting hairspray. Okay? L- let you know this isn't just, you know, it doesn't just happen. I don't just, you know. So, so I get some hairspray. I didn't bring any hairspray with me. So I go get some hairspray. So I don't look like some of you. Shaka Raba. Mainly Stephen. I just always love Stephen's hair. He's just always. Um, Stephen's like, I got some. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, so, anyways, I go to Safeway. I come back. I'm walking into the hotel to go get my stuff. Uh, and, and this guy walks out of the elevator. And the elevator's big, okay? This isn't a little elevator. We got a big elevator. I try to walk in here. He's going to walk out. And I try to walk in, and he, he goes out of his way. Here's, here's me. Here's here, all the space he has. Here's me I'm trying to walk in, right? And he goes, and he checks me, and then he pushes me. He says, you need some elevator etiquette. And I said, God bless you. I'm so sorry. And I walked away. Listen. <laughs> Can I tell you how fast you can get out of the spirit? When someone shoulder checks you, they walk five feet out of their way to shoulder check you and push you. So I'm like, listen, if I'm not saved, you picked the wrong one. Because you would be in the hospital. But I am saved. And if I were to take myself out of the spirit that morning, and the hundreds of people that came forward to get delivered and get healed and get all of that the enemy's like gotcha he'll do stuff like that so i already know that i don't think this is this man i think he full-on manifested and i was looking at a demon so i killed his his thing with kindness i said i'm so sorry you're right would you forgive me i'll give your forgiveness to the next guy and walks off i said okay I get in the elevator, I go up, and I just said, thank you, Lord, that you have taught me how to die and how to live in the Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that that little thing isn't going to work. Man, Lord, bless him. Don't let him die in a car accident as he drives out of here. I'm telling you, in the Spirit realm, you assault a saint. I tell you right away, the devil got more access to that man's life doing that. And I said, Lord, forgive him. You know, that's what the Lord is, is, Stephen's doing it, the Lord's doing it, is forgiving people that wrong him. Why? Because if they don't, so this is why the scripture says, if you don't let the people go, they're not free. 
whom you forgive, I'll forgive. Who you release, I'll release. If you don't, the Lord will hold their sins against you, against them. So I said, Lord, I release him. I forgive him, Lord. Let visions and counters of you. I used to be angry like that, Lord. Forgive him. So I pray now for the conduit of the evil that tried to pull me out. Not for the demon that manifested, but for the man who's bound by a demon that it can just manifest walking by some, a saint. So see what I'm saying? If you just are in the flesh, you, you, wait, wait, you want to you fight me? Say my first rodeo, come here. How, what would happen? I'd try to go worship now. I just strangled a guy. I just got to go worship. You know, one of those people in the church, in the in the hotel might be on their way to church. You know, They're like weren't you that guy? <laughs> just on top of that guy. I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to put money in your neck. You know, I, no, there's no spiritual thing about that at all. You're in the flesh. So that thing at work between you and that person, that fight between you and your spouse that keeps happening, you keep thinking it's your spouse or that coworker or that boss. Let me tell you how many times building cell towers, listen, I was tested by the devil regularly. I showed up to work an hour early just to be in the word because it was regular. If I were to tell you some of the story, you just laugh because you have your own, but... The stuff that people do that have demons, okay? That their partnership with those demons. It's the darndest thing. I've told you some of my stories. I've failed a couple times. I, I, I put my hands around a couple of people's throats as I say. So, so and, I, and I felt the shame afterwards that I got in the flesh at 19, 20, 21. Those are my testings. I was in, at, at, at school to be a pastor some of these times. Where someone came up on me and I was like, okay, I'm going to learn today. And I went right into the flesh. And then I was so ashamed because I was the one in the truck the week before telling how great Jesus was. And now the one standing over them like, how'd that go for you? Now, the next week, if I try to share Jesus, now you're a fraud. It takes a while. What did I have to do? I had to go back to him low. And say, you know what, that was completely wrong. And they try to do the thing of, oh, whatever, you know, because they, they know they got you now. But when you go low and you clean up your mess and you say, that was completely wrong. I was absolutely in the wrong. Would you please forgive me? I'm embarrassed of my, my behavior and what I did. They don't know what to do because the world doesn't do that. The world comes in like, yeah, yeah, I got you. No. As a Christian, you're like, I'm so, that was gross how I behaved and how I acted. Would you please forgive me? All right? So not that you won't always, you'll always get it right, but when you do mess up and you, you, you're convinced that it's a human, you got a human problem, not a spirit problem, and you put your arrows, in, you, you put your sword towards the flesh, clean up your mess, okay? Church, clean up your mess. I've done it. Thank God I didn't do it last week, but I, I've done it, okay? Sl uh, uh, sleeplessness, and by the way, the night before, that's what I was feeling. I know what I'm going to do the next day. And I could feel that I'm in a hotel. The things that happen in those places. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just not, I'm not thinking this is like, you know. Yeah. So I'm praying over my room. I'm getting ready to go to sleep because I want a good night's sleep. I want to be rested if I'm going to go out and pour out for three hours. Just come out, come out, come out, come out for three hours. I want to get some rest. I could feel the presence of something else. And so I just stayed and prayed until it broke. And then I slept. I slept. But if I were to just try, oh, I need sleep and have the adversary present and think I can sleep. No, I stand up. I rebuke the devil and I command him to leave. When I feel it broke, I went to sleep. Some of you try to sleep through those things. You can, you can, you know, you can try. Go for it. If you're able to praise God. But if you can't, then learn from me. Stand up and fight. All right. Number seven, anxiety and fear. You feel that thing, okay? That's the devil. Don't just make it natural. That's what the world tells you. Here's your anxiety medicine. Here's your demon medicine. It doesn't work, okay? It's a devil. Fear. What happened to, to Elisha? 
They got afraid. Huh, Elijah? What did I say? Oh, okay. Number eight, hopelessness. You just start to believe the lie of the devil. It's usually not the first thing. But after all these things start happening, I've tried. This relationship, I've tried. And just get to uh, my dreams, the things, this business the Lord, I felt like the Lord told me to do. And now financially I've been under attack, this, that, and another thing. I'm just going to give it up. We give up. Number nine, feel the feeling of being overwhelmed. Seems like you're just right here all the time. Little things just kind of get you up frustrated. Okay, if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, because they're the best at it. Trying to get a moment, dad, 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 dad. I'm like, <laughs> my soul manifested. It might be a team, I don't know. Like, give me one second. Right? If, if you get to that stage and you don't get away to get to a place of peace, right? He talks about the shoes of peace. If you don't get to a place of peace and you just stay there in that overwhelmed place, some of you are trying to do life. You're full on being assaulted at every angle. And you and I'm going to get to to the, the armor because it's a solution to all of this stuff. But And then you begin to compromise. This is number uh, nine. You begin to compromise to, to sin. This is his ultimate goal, right? That's going to disconnect you from the Lord. So he's trying to get you into sin. Usually, if you're really passionately on fire for the Lord, the first step's not sin. Okay? If it is, by the way, you're probably not passionately on fire for the Lord. So, okay? All right. Those are the ones I have. There's a bunch of other ones. We're going to be in this for a while. So uh, I want to hit now the, the solution, okay? Um, when he says these items, they each represent something, okay? Ultimately, they represent Christ. The scripture says that we have to put it on, but Romans 13 says put on Christ. Is Christ our righteousness? Is Christ our peace? Is Christ the truth? So, so we're putting on Christ here. But it's an attribute of Christ that you put a stand in your life and you're not falling for these things. Okay? The helmet of salvation, this, is Christ our salvation? Is his name salvation? <laughs> Jesus means Yahweh is salvation. He is your salvation. Okay? But it's the assurance of who you are in Christ. Okay? This is the identity. I'm a child of the living God. There is more on my side than on yours. Okay? That's something that you have to have on. You guard your mind. You guard your mind. The mind is a part of the heart. He says, guard your heart above all else, okay? So that's that helmet. You guard your mind. The enemy uses, his attacks are often against the mind. Accusation, offense, these type of things. He, he, he'll, he'll come against um, to get, he'll work through you if you allow him to against someone else accusation viewing someone in a way that Christ doesn't view them okay happens all the time okay so that, 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 that's something we can fall for but we have to have the helmet of salvation he says the, 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 the breastplate of, 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 of righteousness this is a standard that we have of holiness, of making sure that we're in the right standing with the Lord. Okay, so if you're starting to come under attack, I just check my armor. Okay, have I sinned? This would be my chest plate missing. Okay, and then I would go for my waist, which is the, right, the, the belt of truth, the way, gird up your lo- with the, the belt of truth. Uh, I need to get back into the way of truth, right, through repentance, if I'm off the way. If I'm not, if I check and I'm good, then I said, okay, time to fight. And I'll rebuke the devil, okay? So this is, this is something, along each one, I'll tell you what you can do, but I'll just say this in any of these, is you have the authority. Christ has given you his authority to rebuke the devil, okay? You're rebuking him not because of just you, but because of who you are in him. 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Where does he live? In you. Where has he seated you? With him. Okay, so he's with you and you're with him. And this is what Jesus' prayer was in John 17. So, so I, if I'm feeling under attack in a tiredness, sickness, one of these things, I just search my, I search my arm. I said, Holy, Holy Spirit, you bring to my mind anything I've done that's wavering from holiness and righteousness. And the way I've treated my wife, my kids, those are the first places, right? Because those are the people I'm with most. I'm going to transgress someone. It's probably going to be there. With any of the people I work for, or with, or this, that, and I just go through. The Holy Spirit highlights something. I go, oh, there it is. I put myself in the enemy's territory through that sin. So why am I shocked that he got an arrow? Okay? But when I'm with the ranks, and I'm in a place of truth and righteousness and faith, it's going to be hard for him to get me. It's usually, I have, I have, I have fallen for the bait. This is what the scripture says in, in, in James chapter 1. What does he say? He says, don't say the Lord's tempting you when you're being, going to trials. Don't say the Lord's tempting you. The Lord is not tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone with evil. No. He says, each one of you is drawn away by your own evil desires. But sometimes those evil desires is, is the right to be heard, the right to defend your, your case against someone. Right? This is what I see oftentimes in marriages, in, 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 in fellowship of the saints. Is this right to be seen, heard, defend, this, that, or another thing. He says, what does he say? Goes on a couple chapters later. He says, humble yourself. Submit yourself to God. He says, resist the devil. And he will flee. 2 Corinthians 4, he talks about he says, you, you, God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. He will always give you a way out of everything you go to. So you can't say, oh, it was just too much. No, he said, I will always. But it comes by submitting yourself to the devil or to the Lord. Resisting the devil. You got to a test, test. <laughs> the, the submitting yourself to the Lord, resisting the devil. But if you're not in a place of submission and you're out of that, then you can get hit. Okay? And that's where I'm not. And he says, if any of you think you're beyond the ability to stumble, you're about to stumble. That's how that verse starts. So this is where it's like, oh, I've been in this a long time. The devil can't get me. You know, pride. He just got. Well, okay? So, so, no, that's where he says, be sober. Peter says, be sober and vigilant. We know what sober looks like, right? We know what not being sober looks like, right? <laughs> if you don't, drive by this, this strip on the way down uh, about 11 o'clock. <clears throat> we, 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 we know what that doesn't, what, what the opposite of being sober. So we know what being sober, clear-minded. Well, guess what? Being tired, all those things, you're not sober anymore. So you see what I'm saying? You're offended. I promise you, you're not sober in the spirit. You're offended. You're hot. You're angry. That happens to the best of us. But what he says is don't sin in your anger. Lest you give. He's going to say that in, in, in the chapter before this. Two chapters before this. Um, Ephesians 4. He says, he says don't sin in your anger. And then he says don't go to sleep in your anger that you sinned in. Lest you give the devil a foothold. Give you a position over you. That's that, that 2 Corinthians chapter 2, right? Lest he get an advantage on us. Okay? So this isn't that you won't get angry. He says, back away. Walk away from the situation. Seek your peace. Okay? The world's going to do its thing. But I have given you my peace that passes understanding. When you've lost it, you've lost the peace, go find it. Don't try to solve the situation. It's a trap. It's a trap, okay? I've tried to solve situations too many times when I'm already entangled. It never worked. It got worse. How many of you say, hey, amen, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I got, you got a witness. The rest of you are lying, okay? You're in church. You're not supposed to do that. So, so we've got out of the spirit and into the flesh. And when you are, get back into the spirit. 
don't try to solve this. I just need a couple minutes. That person might not want to give you a couple minutes. You just say, I need a couple minutes. And you go away and you pray in the spirit. You find your peace. His name is Jesus. Okay? You've sinned. You go find your righteousness. It's in the blood of Jesus. Okay? You go, you, you get back to that place. You begin to lose your hope. The shield of faith, right? Faith is connected to hope. Those two things are tied. What does he say? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the certainty of things unseen. Unseen as the promise. Hope is promises that are yet to be seen, but you're confident that you will see it in the land of the living. Amen? So when you start to lose that, you go back and you get in the word and you remind yourself of what you already know that the enemy is trying to steal from you. Listen, this is how the enemy works, okay? I've already talked about this in the past, but I want to kind of re-bring it. What does the enemy come to do? John 10, 10. To steal, kill, and destroy. Now, what's the word steal? Klepto. It's to take it without you knowing. I told you about my encounter in the subway in France, right? In Paris. I look down, and the man has his hand in my pocket, but I just happened to look down. I, I didn't feel anything. I looked up, oh, scoozy, scoozy. A scoozy. I was probably in the flesh at that point. A scoozy. I was a teacher, scoozy. So, so, this is years ago, okay? Now I'd be like, what do you want? You can, you can have it. But at that point, I probably was in the flesh, okay? So, a scoozy. So, um, <laughs> he wants to take it without you knowing. To kill is actually the word to sacrifice. Okay, and then to dis- to 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 destroy is to ruin a thing. So what the enemy does, it doesn't happen in a moment. What the enemy does is get you to agree that it's ruined. This marriage is ruined. It's beyond the point of reconciliation. It's over, and you sacrifice it. He can't kill it. You lay it down, and now he has stolen it. So this is, this is his tactics. First, it's the, it's the one that's mentioned last. Ruin the thing so that you sacrifice it. You lay it down. You stop hoping, believing, stop, stop trying. And then now he has it. Thank you very much. You know, you go to a garage sale from time to time. And, and there will be like a, a thing there that's like super valuable. But the person didn't know its value. Or they, they forgot its value. And now it's, you know, they talk about these things on like, what was that show from the 90s? They, they had like a, the road show. What was that thing? Antique road show. And they're like, I got this at a, at a garage sale. They're like, well, this is worth a million dollars. You know, it's like, what? This, this, is, this is one of those things. It's like, I don't know the value of it anymore. The enemy will work on you until you forget about the value of a thing. It's ruined in your, and you just lay it down. But it doesn't happen in a moment. The day of evil comes. He's already done a ton of work. That you may stand in the day of evil. He's already at work shooting arrows, getting you to agree with him, offense this, that, and another thing. Some people have been so deep in fellowship in a body, a family, and all of a sudden the enemy begins to draw you away, and all of a sudden, poof, Removed you, you go wandering. How many of you are going to be really honest? You've had a wandering season in your Christian fellowship. You weren't in a body. It's not fun. But I want you to be able to, maybe sometime this week, evaluate some of the situations. Whether you're, you know, if you've been married before and you're not married to that person. Or, or there's relationships you wish you had and you don't have anymore. Or fellowships you. And see, can you, can you, can you grow in discernment? What was standing me up to? How did he ruin that thing? And how did I agree with him? Now, sometimes there is, people are in agreement with the enemy, and you need to remove yourself, okay? I get that. But most of the time, oftentimes, the enemy's behind those sides, and he's working to get you to be fearful, this, that, and another thing, and you remove, and the enemy wasn't, or the Lord wasn't saying that, that. And you couldn't hear the Lord because you already were in a place of offense, this, that, and other things stirred up. He got your hearing to be closed. 
He got your hearing to be closed. You know what the Lord gives us a solution to that? Elders. You know, I talk about this so much because that's the one thing. I was telling my wife this. I just see the enemy's attack on bodies of Christ around the globe to either for a bishop, a head elder, to appoint elders who are not elders. I've seen this a million times. It's, it's, it's like, those are not elders. Those are wealthy people. And what we, it's not, I don't judge the pastor saying he appointed them because they're wealthy. No, because it seems that you understand something. You're educated in physical things. So it must mean that you would understand these things. No, the spiritually discerned are discerned spiritually. First Corinthians chapter two. Spirit discerns spirit. You don't put someone who understands business just because he understands business as an elder. Spiritual things are discerned by the spirit. If they're not there in that, that's the best way to ruin someone. Put the coat of many colors on Joseph when he's a child. That's the best way to ruin. Is there a call? Yes. Were they ready? No. Ruins the thing. Right? So what we do now, what the tactic of the enemy is don't trust any elders. Why? Well, I've seen elders. No, you haven't. Those weren't real elders. So now we don't trust God's government. So when you're believing a lie, the enemy, what does he say? He says he veils. Second Corinthians 4, he veils. The, it says the God has veiled them. They can't see, lest the light of Christ set them free. So he veils something. He makes you begin to ruin a thing. You begin to believe a lie. And your security is the elders to say, hey, what's going on? Well, and I'm just, and they just, and I'm just, and I'm just done. And the elders to say, well, let's talk. No, I'm done. The Lord spoke to me. No, you can't hear the Lord right now. I'm sorry. But I've been in places where I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't listen to those elders because they're not elders. And that's the worst thing. This is why Paul says to Timothy, don't, don't lay hands too, too hastily. What he's talking about is the commissioning of elders. Don't do it too quick. You can't unlay hands. Moses, you choose your elders, but you're going to be stuck with whoever you choose. Choose carefully. <laughs> okay? So this is what your safeguard in the family is that, one, you are in a family. And when you're beginning to feel drawn away from a family... You lean into God's government. He says, go to that person personally. Bring another believer. But if they won't listen, go to the ecclesia, the elders. But we say, no, the elders are bad too. You just judge God's government. I hope, I have, I hope you have fun. Be very careful in that. Because it's the one safeguard you have. How many have a teenager? Not you. I mean, you know a teenager. They turn 13, 14. All of a sudden, there's a boy. And it, it, it's like the most safe thing they could do in that moment is listen to mom and dad. But what's the one thing they don't want to listen to? Why? The enemy has already done the work. They don't want you to be happy. They don't know what they're talking about. Whatever it is. And you fall for that trap. No, that's, a, that's the most safe person in the whole world to you. You run to mom and dad. My kids, they said, I don't have to worry about that. I have you guys to tell me whether I'm doing it right or wrong. We'll see. It hasn't been tested yet. But you see what I'm saying? It'll be tested. Hey, that's, that person doesn't, that person's not going after Christ. You sure that that's a person? I, I just don't, I don't, I'm not telling you that that's a good person. I wouldn't pursue relationship with that person. I told my kid the other day that. Had a, I got a phone number from a girl in, in Baltimore. And I said, yeah, you can throw that in the garbage. What? It's just, a, it's just texting. It's on your phone. You're not just touching one. It was on my wife's phone. But I was like, you can't do that. Why? And it, oh, ha. Huh. I said, you want to awaken your youthful thing before the time? So as the scripture talks about, it's not time for that. Why would you have a girl that's a friend and you would begin to cultivate inti- the intimacy through friendship with the opposite sex before that's to be awakened. And he's like, wow, that makes sense. Thank you, Dad. <sighs> so, so this is the counsel God has given you in the midst of traps is the, 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 the brethren. So, so, so all these things may happen. Okay? 
Your safeguard is you have the authority to rebuke the devil. You wake up, you're all sore. You could chalk it off to being natural, but you can at least pray. Okay? I don't know why my feet hurt, my body feels like I did squats yesterday, but I didn't. Okay, okay, so let's pray. Okay, don't be ignorant of his devices. All of a sudden you wake up, you got a big thing coming on this week, boom, you're sick. You can say, I'm sick, where's the day quail? Or you can rebuke the devil. Your relationship with your spouse, okay? One, seek, we have, we have pastors in the house, we do a ton of time. Anyone that's basically 30 years, pretty much all gone through marriage could, because they're like, I always joke, by the time you get to third year, you realize, I need help. And help's okay. Usually first year, you're like, I kind of need help, but not really. Really, I'm just amusing you guys, you know? By the time you get to third year, you're like, oh, I think I need help. Because this relationship's hard. Two becoming one, not so easy. Like, yeah, and it's okay to need help. That's what the family's for. Right? That's why I said a joke about 13-year-olds, and I'm not I'm just joking to anyone who is that age. But we joke when you change and chemicals start moving, all of a sudden it's like you want to reject what's been so true and so stable and so trustworthy for so long and just reject it. Don't let those hormones do that. It's not even a demon. It's just hormones, right? But the demon comes in those moments. The enemy comes in these moments. Big transitions. Well, all those things. You're not eating healthy. Sometimes we just work our way right into the devil's hands. I'm saying don't. So you have that list of things. This is what you're going to do. The, 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 the sword of the spirit is the word of God. Shield of faith, right? The word of God provokes faith. How many know that? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word, the rhema. Rhema comes when you read the logos, the written word, and you're in the spirit. You're spending time with God. You're reading the word, and the spirit of God makes a revelation to you. Okay? This is the best way to read the word of God. It's not a ritual, as, 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 as George was saying. None of these things are rituals. We don't do communion every week just to fill a, a point of time. No, it's healing. It, it, the, the scripture says, as often as you gather, do this thing. Why? Because something's happening in it. Okay? That you're not getting drawn away because you sinned, you did this. This is a regular thing that we do to wash that away. It's a reset. It's the cross being brought before you together with the saints. Okay? It's very important. Everything we do here is, <laughs> is intentional. To get you, to, to raise you, to set you free, okay? All right. So then we rebuke the devil, okay? So we, we, we disagree with the devil's work. We recognize it is the devil. We go to prayer. We get in the spirit. You, listen, you're not always in the spirit, meaning you're not that full-on everything you understand. Da, 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 da. No, you can build yourself in the spirit and get in the spirit. That's why I said last year this time, I said, I encourage you because I could just, the Lord told me to do it, but... I said, some of you don't even know what it's like to be in the spirit. So I said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you an assignment for the next month. Every day, pray one hour in the spirit. Once that turns on and you experience like, oh, this is what he's talking about. Now you have an, you have a tool in the arsenal against the enemy. Now you know what it means to pray in the spirit and what it's going to do. You feel your, your, your spirit man do that Mario thing where you use the mushroom, right? You feel that in the spirit? Anyone ever experienced that in the spirit, okay? First five minutes, you just feel like you're in mud. About 50 minutes in. You feel fires moving through your veins. You're like, I wish the devil would show up right now. Okay, when you're trying to fight the devil, but you just basically lukewarm in the spirit, good luck. Okay, so I'm trying to teach you these principles of what Paul's actually saying to do. Okay, who am I? I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Am I in the truth? Am I in a place of righteousness right now? I am. I am. Where the spirit says no. Remember what you said to your spouse? Remember what you did? Remember this? Remember that? Remember you took that thing from work and you thought it would be okay? You know, whatever it is, right? You repent. You fix it. Boom. You're in a good place. Your, your armors, there's no, there's no loose spots, okay? Then we go to the spirit, okay? That's that praying in the spirit. Praying, 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 praying. We need to grow in prayer, church. We have one hour that we want to invite you to next week, 8 o'clock, because next week's service starts at? Second service at? Who's coming to the nine? 
Who's coming to 1130? Okay, I like that. It's good. Even, even. Okay. Come, come, come to the prayer time if you're at the early one. Okay. Spend time before you come praying if you're coming to the second one. Okay. But I, I just really encourage that, that we would pray together. Tomorrow, Monday, we have a time of prayer. This week, we have a time of fasting. Okay, so um, Pastor Jerry, what, what do we got? Tomorrow at what time? Seven to nine here. Some of you, you're like, I think I'm under a spiritual attack. You just helped me understand that. Come tomorrow. You're going to leave. You're going to leave with that thing breaking, okay? Seven to nine tomorrow night. Monday through Wednesday, we're fasting. You don't have to, but you're welcomed into it. We want to go after a time of just consecration before the Lord um, to make sure that everything with Tacoma, we're just going the right direction with the Lord. So we're giving ourselves to a time of prayer, fasting, because the, the victory is in the Lord. We need another like $150,000. One, uh, that means we've raised two, close to $250,000. That's cool. <laughs> That's amazing. So we need another 150, but listen, this is on the Lord. The Lord said, I'll build my church. So that gets up. I don't put that all on me. Like I said, I, I don't need another this, that, or another thing. This is the Lord, okay? So we're going to go to prayer for it because the Lord will begin to, 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 to cause the breakthrough, amen? So um, that's going to be tomorrow, and then that's Monday through Wednesday. This is the stuff that's going to cause your fire to stay ignited. The biggest thing the enemy's trying to do is to ruin your spiritual habits, to get you to be lukewarm. It's not even a battle if you're lukewarm. It's not even a battle. You're, 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 not, you're no threat to the enemy when it's just you're in the flesh, Okay? So we can seem zealous at times. I, I want to lead the pastoral staff to stay on fire. Okay. I also tell them the importance of resting. Okay. The scripture has a very clear thing about resting. You can use a field so much that it ruins the field. This is what the Lord gave Jubilee. Every seven years rest and then the ultimate rest. Okay. So there's these things that, that are for an imagery to you physically. So we're not just and all of a sudden we just burn out. No, no, no. I teach almost the homeless the half the more than half the team was off last week i said just just rest okay just take time off we give we pay our pastors every uh we give them a, a i don't know it's all different for how long but uh time off listen you need time those of you who don't work you need time that could be a spiritual thing of just your soul getting extra rest okay to me you haven't rested in so long you're just too easy you're right here and everything you haven't rested in so long. The enemy doesn't have to splash you a little bit of water. And you, you, you know, there's a little, little thing. And you, you, cause you're about to drown at all times. You're barely surviving. Okay. You need to rest. So some of the things are, you know, some of you need to fast just to get, you know, get quiet and kill the flesh to realize how strong the flesh is. Some of you fast from social media. Let, let me just give you this last time. I pray for you. Listen, social media is something that it's not even just, it's just all of the different platforms, but people are just scrolling, just spending countless amounts of time. It's not good for your soul. Can I just tell you that? Some of y'all need to just fast from that. And it's in the first day of fasting, you're going to realize how addicted you are. You're going to be like, where's my phone? Oh my gosh. You don't need it in the bathroom. Okay. So, so, so leave it. I don't pick that phone up. You ask my wife this. I don't pick that up in the morning. I don't pick that thing up. I don't touch that thing. I'm going to spend time with the Lord. I don't want any of that. Okay? I don't look at that stuff before going to bed. Some of you can't sleep. You think it's a demon. Yeah, the demon is getting you to go and scroll, fill your soul with a bunch of stuff so you can't sleep. Okay? So some of these things are natural that you're doing that you can say it's all natural. But the desire to keep doing it can be spiritual. Okay? So fasting from a thing, food, maybe some of your addictions is food. Fast from it. TV, fast from it. My kids have been under a fast for a while now. They're like, when are we getting back? I was like, I don't know. You might not. <clears throat> I'm just being honest. I want the fire of God. And when I feel it's being drawn out of my family... I'm going to cut whatever it is, and I'm going to add focus to the things that put fire so we can be strong in the Lord and mighty in his power. Go ahead and stand up. I want to pray for you. 
Be strong in the Lord and mighty in his power. In the power of his might. So listen, that's something you need to do to do that. There's things that make you strong in the Lord. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse, or chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 4, the praying in the spirit will strengthen your spirit. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. There are things that you do that strengthen you in the spirit. Reading your word, prayer, praying in the spirit, worshiping. These things will break spiritual attacks so easy. Now what, what the Baptist might do, nothing against the Baptist, but what, the, what my brothers and sisters in Christ in the Baptist church might do is not pray in the spirit, but pray, but not in the spirit, right? Because there's a whole cessationist thing connected to most Baptist churches, <clears throat> which is like the, the fire, which is the power. I need the power. Okay, I don't want to do spiritual things without the, the spirit. That's just crazy. So I need the power. But there's things that provoke that power. Okay? Provoke it regularly, daily. Okay? Don't wane, wane from your, your word. Some of you are new in Christ or baby in Christ. Listen, I just read one chapter every day, every night. One chapter every night when I got saved. That's it. Can I just tell you, I had dyslexia. I barely could read. And I would read. It would take me forever just to get through one chapter. You know that dyslexia broke by just reading the Bible. It was just a moment. It just broke. The fear of speaking in front of people broke. All those things. But I grew in the spirit to where it came over my soul and my body. My body being healed. All those things. Because I was strong in the spirit and the power of his might. Okay, so so um, if you're under a spiritual attack, it happened to us the other night, maybe a week ago, and the Lord had already told me to talk on this, and I can't remember what it was. We had something that I can't remember what it was, but couldn't sleep. It was like three in the morning. My wife goes, "Are you up?" And I go, "I am now." Um, <laughs> but I could feel the presence right when I woke up. It was anxiety. It felt like that that quick heartbeat. And so my wife's like, I just feel this. I said, I feel it. I was sleeping, but now well, the second I woke up, I felt it. It was, in the, it was like present. So I just got up and prayed. I wasn't going to sit there. Something has trespassed. I can complain the fact that it was able to, or I can get up and put a Holy Ghost fire on the devil so he doesn't want to come. Wrong house. Wrong room. There's going to be a little fire. You're going to learn today. <laughs> This place is filled with fire. Amen. It broke and I went to sleep. Okay. So it's not that it, 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 it won't come. He says, so that you may stand. Paul's like, it's going to come. I want you to stand on that day. All right. Go ahead and lift your hands. Go ahead and say this. Say, you devil. You're not for me. I renounce your activity in my life. The anxiety, the fear, the infirmity, the tiredness, the sickness, the offense, it's not for me. By the power of the blood of Jesus, I break your attack off my life. You leave my family, you leave my marriage, you leave my business, you leave my finances, you leave my health, my mind, my body. of God. Lord, I repent for weighing from the things of God. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Ignite in me the fresh fire of the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the spirit. Father God, free my family from every assault of the devil. I break the cord of the devil off of my marriage, off of me. Now, I, I rebuke you, you unclean spirit. Leave me now. I blot out the power of witchcraft that's been sent against me. Let every arrow of the devil be removed in Jesus' name. 
I speak to my body. Be healed in Jesus' name. I speak to heaviness. Leave me now. Leave me now. Leave me now. How many of you say you have heaviness? You felt it this week. Heaviness, lift a hand. Okay, put a hand on someone who's, who said, yeah, heaviness, I just felt it. And you say, heaviness, leave them now. Heaviness, leave them now. We arrest that spirit of heaviness, fatigue and tiredness. We command you be loose from the people now. We break that power. We break that power. We break that power. We blot it out by the blood of Jesus. Be loosed in Jesus' name. Heaviness, be loosed in Jesus' name. I, I arrest the power of heaviness and I command it off God's people now. Be loosed in Jesus' name. Be in Jesus' name. Lord, let your spirit renew the strength of, of the power of the spirit of might upon your people. Tiredness, fatigue, leave now in Jesus' name. Uh, how many of you say anxiety? Just that, just that, just restlessness. You, you experience an attack. You experience that, that within the last week or just regularly you experience that attack. Okay, lift up your hands. You say anxiety or fear. You just It just comes. It comes and it tries to entangle you. Okay, pray for one of those people. We're going to pray for each other. Right now, you spirit of anxiety. You, you spirit of anxiety. We arrest you now. You let God's people go. We break, we break your attack now. We rebuke the devil who is sent on that assignment to produce anxiety and fear. We rebuke you. We command you to leave us now. You let God's people go. Now, in Jesus' name. I arrest every spirit of anxiety and fear coming against God's people. You let them go now, in Jesus' mighty name. I put fire on every spirit of anxiety and fear. Go now. You let God's people go now, you spirit. I uproot you. I break the power of the devil off of God's people right now. You spirit of anxiety and fear. Let them go. We rebuke you. Leave us now. We rebuke you. Leave us now. In Jesus' name. We break your cord. We break your yoke. We blot out your power by the blood of Jesus. There is no power higher than the power. If you're if you're struggling with 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 um, you're being attacked, whether it's attacking you or you feel a fence rising, and you know it, you're fighting against it, but the enemy's trying to he's doing all kinds of stuff to get you offended. People are doing some, you know, like I said, that guy coming out of the is like, you know, that could, the enemy's doing that, but the enemy's trying to do that to you, okay? You can feel that attack. It seems it's been coming, uh, whether at your workplace, in your in your in your house, uh, a friend, and you're just you're fi- you're guarding your heart, but it feels hard to do because the enemy's doing stuff through people to try to offend you. Uh, uh, raise your hand. Wave at me. Go ahead and say this. Say, Father God, I recognize my enemy is this spirit, not that person. So I forgive them. And I ask that you set them free. But right now, I ask that you arrest this spirit. And I command it to leave me now. You leave that person and you leave me. You spirit of offense. I rebuke you. I choose to forgive. And I command that spirit to leave now. You leave me, you leave them now. You leave us now. I put fire on that devil. I rebuke you. I say no to your tactics. I will not fall for your trap. And I command you to leave me now. Father God, forgive me. Where I have agreed with that, forgive me, Lord. I forgive them. Forgive me for every place I have agreed with that spirit. I now come out of agreement with that devil. And I command it to be uprooted. And leave me, leave me now in Jesus' name. Now about sickness, 
this chronic sickness or just a sickness in this season has arisen. It's trying to get you to just to fatigue, get you down. Just wave at me if that's you. Go ahead and say you, you can pray for those people who got their hands up, but let's begin to pray. I arrest that spirit of infirmity. You devil coming to cause pe- God's people to be tired, to be fatigued, to be weary because their physical body's under attack. We rebuke you. We say no to sickness and infirmity off of our spouse, off of our kids, off of our home, off of us, not for us. You devil, I rebuke you. Leave me now. Leave me now. Let me go. You let my lungs go. You let my stomach go. You let my mind go. You let my body go. You let my heart go. Go. Whatever area you feel under attack, speak to that thing. You said, let me go. We put fire on the hand of the devil who has taken hold of God's people. Let him go now. Let the fire of God come upon every devil hiding, scheming attacking, putting ropes on. We break every spiritual rope placed there by any spirit partnered with a witch or a warlock. We're not afraid, but we're also not ignorant. We break the power of the court of the devil that's been wrapped upon God's people to hinder, to stop God's purposes and plans from prospering in these people's lives. We rebuke that devil now. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. You let God's people go now. I speak to every devil coming against God's people. You let him go. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke every devil of sickness, infirmity. You come out of God's people now. You come out of God's people now. Every spirit hindering marriages, I break your power. You let these marriages go. You let their spouses go. You let them go. You spirit of division. You spirit, I just see sluggardness. You spirit of sluggardness. I arrest you, you spirit. And I command you, let God's people go. You let God's people go. I rebuke that spirit of sluggardness. And let God's people go. Lord, we break the yoke off of our unsafe family members right now. We lift them up to you. Off of our family members who know you, but the enemy's pulling them away to nothingness, to to, to dull their spiritual senses, to get them away from their spiritual uh, habits and disciplines. We rebuke those devils now on their behalf. You said intercede for the saints. So right now we intercede for these saints. Right now you devil coming against them, their family members, the ones they love, their friends that that know the Lord. We break the power of the devil right now. Let them go. Let him go. You spirit of fatigue and sickness and tiredness, we rebuke you now. Let him go. I extend to those who are watching online right now. Let the power of God defend you. Every devil coming against them, we rebuke you now. Let him go. We speak healing, freedom in Jesus' name. Lord, let that veil that the devil has put on their eyes come off by fire. We say, fire on the veil the devil has put on our, 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 our these saints. Fire on that veil. Be removed now in Jesus' name. We ask, Lord, for the fire of the Spirit to begin to burn in the hearts of your people. Let them have a hunger for spiritual things. Let them not think, oh, spiritual things, oh, I don't have time for that. I'm so busy, Lord. No, let the fire, let their passion for spiritual things increase. The ministry team to come up. I want to release you, but if you feel something stirring, you said eh, it hasn't broke. These guys are going to pray for you. We'll pray for you as long as you want to fight for you. We'll fight for you. We'll fight for you as long as you're willing to fight for you. So more ministry team come up. That's a second year grads, third year uh, grads. You can come up, make yourself available if you have the time to, to minister to the saints who just feel like, yeah, there's some cords that haven't been broken, tiredness, sickness, fatigue. The rest of you, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he lead you by his spirit. And may he fill you with his peace in Jesus' name. God bless you. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were blessed and encouraged. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing content.